Hey everyone, I'm Nick Raboy from MongoDB, and in this video we're going to get a taste of what you can do with the Aggregation Pipeline Builder that can be accessed directly within MongoDB Atlas. So up on my screen you'll notice that I do have MongoDB Atlas loaded. Um, this I do have one cluster available. I am using a free tiered cluster in this example. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and click on Browse Collections. And I do have quite a few databases and collections. These are all from the sample data set. I'm going to go ahead and click on Sample Mflix as the one that I'm going to be using for this example. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Movies. So to give you an idea of what these movies look like, um, we have information such as plot, title, cast, runtime, etc. Anything that you would expect when it comes to, say, Netflix, IMDb, similar services. Um, so what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be actually playing around with the aggregation pipeline builder. So a graphical tool that lets you build and test your aggregation pipelines. So that way you can get more comfortable when it comes to running more complex queries in MongoDB. So with the movies database open, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on aggregation. And that's going to drop us into the aggregation pipeline builder, which you'll notice is a near similar experience that you would get in MongoDB Compass if you've ever worked with MongoDB Compass. So you have the opportunity to do it directly with an atlas or within Compass. It's totally up to you. So if I scroll down into the aggregation pipeline builder that we're offered through Atlas, uh, you'll notice that I do have some sample documents to give us an idea of what we're going to be attempting to work with. Um, this is just a sample data set so you can get an idea that everything is working as expected. So let's go ahead and do a first stage of this builder. And we're going to do, uh, we're going to start with something simple and we're going to work our way up into something a little more complicated to give you an idea of some of the stuff that you can do. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to do a match query. I want to find specific documents that meet my particular criteria. So I'm going to say match. And well, what exactly do I want to match on? So if I scroll through this document to see what exactly is available to me, I want to actually look at the cast. So I want to find a all particular movies that have a particular cast member, so an, act, an actor. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say cast. And I'm going to say, let's, let's search for Ryan Reynolds. And you'll notice that it does generate a preview based on what I had for this particular stage in the pipeline. And this is useful because it gives you an idea of, well, one, is my query actually working? So is this aggregation working up into this part? And is it working correctly? Um, so if I scroll through some of these documents in the sample data set, I'm going to look for cast, which is an array, even though I provided just a solid string value. And sure enough, we do have data that has Ryan Reynolds. Um, so this, you're not going to get much uh, benefit of this particular aggregation over a simple find operation because a find operation is in fact a match. So we're going to scroll and do another stage in this aggregation pipeline. So for this stage, Let's go ahead and say that we don't want to work with arrays anymore. This this cast array, it's cool. We're working with an array. It, we MongoDB has plenty of operators that allow you to work with arrays successfully. But just for the sake of this example, we're going to say, you know what, we're done with arrays. So I'm going to look for the unwind operator. So the unwind operator will flatten this array for us. So what I'm going to do for this particular unwind is I'm just going to provide the path. I'm going to ignore the other optional operators. Um, so I'm going to say dollar sign cast because we're using the dollar sign because we want to reference a particular field that exists within our document and not just provide some kind of string value. So by saying dollar sign cast, we're saying that we're referencing the cast property, the, the cast field. And now instead of an array, we now have a flattened document or set of documents that would contain all of the values in that in that cast array. All right, so we've done a match. We've, un we've unwound the array. Let's take it a step further. Let's say that we want to do another narrow down of our data set. So we initially searched for Ryan Reynolds documents, which reduced our data set significantly. We unwound the array. Let's go ahead and do another match based on the Ryan Reynolds cast member, so the Ryan Reynolds actor. So we want to further narrow down the scope of our results. So I'm going to say add a stage, and I'm going to say match. For this match, I'm once again going to say cast is going to be uh, Ryan Reynolds. And you'll notice that once again, we do get some sample documents back. It's only a sample set of 10, 
uh, whereas we could end up with many more documents as part of the actual result set of this aggregation pipeline. Uh, but if we look for cast, we know that cast is, in fact, Ryan Reynolds here. Great. Let's go ahead and further scope down the results of our aggregation pipeline. We want to narrow it down. And let's say that we want this time to say uh, that we want to get the total screen time that Ryan Reynolds has for all of his movies that he's ever produced. Movies, shows, whatever exists in this movie's collection. So let's go ahead and add another stage to our pipeline. This time around, let's go ahead and say that we want to do a group. So in this case, we're actually going to group our documents based on certain criteria. And that criteria is going to include the actual sum of the runtime of these movies. Because if I look at the samples that came back, we do have a runtime field. Um, I'm going to assume that this is minutes. It could be something else. But uh, it doesn't really matter for this example. So let's go ahead and make some changes here. Uh, we do need to provide an ID and some fields. So we're going to start with that ID. Uh, the ID is, we're just going to leave it as one. Uh, the value of this ID doesn't really matter for this example because we don't need to specify uh, our actual documents in this case. We only care about the runtime. We know that we're only going to get information about this, this actor. Um, so let's make some changes. Our first field, uh, let's go ahead and say that we want to include the cast member as, in the results. Um, and the, uh, aggr the accumulator that we're going to be using is we only want the first actor returned, which should only ever be Ryan Reynolds because we did the match after the unwind. So let's go ahead and do the, this operator. Let's go ahead and say first, and we're going to get the first cast member returned. So in this case, it's going to be dollar sign cast. Uh, and you'll notice that it did provide us a sample that came back. In this case, we have an ID which is fixed of one. And we have a cast member, Ryan Reynolds. That really doesn't help us because we're still trying to get the, the total runtime of these movies. Um, so let's go ahead and add another field to our group. Let's go ahead and say that this time we're going to call it uh, screen time. And for screen time, we're going to use another accumulator. So we're going to say this time around, we're going to say sum. And it's going to be the sum of our runtime. So we're going to say dollar sign runtime. Uh, and this will return the total runtime, which is, we're assuming, uh, maybe 1,941 minutes, uh, or whatever that accumulator is, the summation of the runtimes, uh, which is great. Um, if we wanted to get rid of this ID, which is not particularly useful to us in this particular aggregation pipeline, we can say, let's go ahead and add another stage. Um, and I'm showing you as many stages as I can right now because that's the whole point of the aggregation pipeline. And the aggregation pipeline builder is that you can add numerous stages to manipulate your data however you want it to be. So in this case, what I'm going to say is I'm going to say project. So I'm going to project which fields I want. And the fields that I want, well, basically I want to say what I don't want. And what I don't want is I don't want the ID included. So what I can say is ID zero. So uh, by saying ID zero, we're saying omit the ID and include everything else. So in this case, now we do have our sample. Our sample is one single result, and that is Ryan Reynolds with a screen time. So you'll notice that we do have quite a few stages in this aggregation pipeline. There are probably 100 different ways to do the same pipeline, uh, or this pipeline might not actually be useful to you. Uh, but we have a match followed by an unwind, followed by a match, followed by a group, followed by a project. And in each stage of this pipeline, we do have some samples along the way that will help you when it comes to working with your data. So if you like this video, please take a moment to hit that like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And I'll see you in the next video.